you assume that say half a trillion of foreign money uh, swings from China to India and let's assume this is spread over five years, uh -huh. that's roughly hundred billion dollars a year coming that's into the country. That's what we did one lakh. 1 lakh 20, 1 lakh 30. I think <laughs> the market levels are a little scary, I have also have to admit. So the number of Indians filing returns of 1 crore or upwards has doubled in the last 5 years. Are you saying there's a way of making money from those who've already made money? That's right. Whether it is chappal, whether it is undergarments, whether it is motorbikes, whether it is jewellery, the purveyor of class products, expensive products, is doing way better than the purveyor of mass products. Hi there and welcome to another episode of The Market Cafe. I'm your host Surabhi Upadhyay. Now have you ever had that feeling when you hear about all these new luxury brands, these fancy bags, those rich perfumes coming into the Indian markets, new stores opening or say when you read about uh, a real estate company that's selling flats worth seven, eight, nine crores in a matter of a few days or hey and I know we've all faced this when you're looking to book that next holiday and you realize that the best hotels, the best resorts are already sold out and they almost are throughout the year. That's when you ask yourself, what's happening? The answer, Indians are getting richer. We see it all around. But that's when a lot of people might have this thought crossing through their heads. I know I do that. Okay, great. Indians are getting richer. It's good for the country, good for overall growth. But hello, isme mere ko kya? how do I benefit from it? Now, I met a gentleman a uh, couple of days back who had an answer to this question. Believe it or not, he said, Surabhi, there could be a way where you can benefit and get richer because Indians are getting richer. Yes, you have my attention, I am sure, uh, or I have your attention rather. So without further ado, let me introduce my guest on the show today. He's someone you know already. He's uh, no new face to the capital markets. Saurabh Mukherjee of Marcellus. Saurabh, thank you so much for joining in. Great to have you on the show. Thank you for inviting me on the show. It's a pleasure being here. Very nicely introduced <laughs> subject, I have to be honest. I haven't seen anybody else introduce ultra high net worth consumption in that attractive a manner. It's, it's just common sense. Again, that's the one thing I really love about Saurabh. He makes money simple and he brings so much of common sense. Uh, so it doesn't kind of you know, throw you off. And that's the, the hallmark of this show, what we try and do here. We try and make finance, investing and money just simple. It can't be rocket science. That's our mantra. So Saurabh, uh, let's get started and we're going to get you some nice coffee or tea or whatever it is that you'd like to have. Thank you very much. And not the studios, it's the Market Cafe today. Let's Fantastic. Go. Thank you. <laughs> so Saurabh, good to have you here. It's, yeah. a, it's a great feeling to have you across the table because I really <laughs> feel conversations are best had in this manner. So really appreciate you taking out the time today. No, my pleasure. It's a pleasure being in a studio. <laughs> I think I haven't been uh, in a proper studio setting for a while, yeah. courtesy COVID. But uh, it's great to get the old conversations going again. No, absolutely. So tell me, what's been uh, keeping you busy these days? What's new? What's happening at work? Life? So look, uh, last week we celebrated five years of Marcellus. So we organized oh. a, a party for our clients, around 300 clients from all wow. over the country flew in. Uh -huh. uh, and then that apart, I have to confess, the other part of our lives which has got significantly busier, busier is foreign inflows. Okay. So uh, foreign institutional investors have taken a liking to what we do. Um, some pension funds, some churches, uh, some universities. So, um, so there's a fair bit of documentation and uh, negotiation involved in signing up foreigners. So hopefully, fingers crossed, um, the business will carry on humming in the way it's done in the, over the last very, five years. Very, very interesting. So I'll tell you what, you know, for, uh, for viewers who already know this, uh, Saurabh has been in the capital markets for, for a long period, I think 15 years, yeah, almost yeah. 15 years, various capacities. He's been a stock picker. Uh, he's been looking at companies for a long time and five now I know just five years back he started out uh, his own uh, firm called Marcellus and uh, it's quite interesting now you're getting foreign money as well so now next time on our regular news shows we'll call you for the FPI voice right what, what are the, we'll, the Firang saying about this we'll market? try my best to give color on <laughs> FPIs the good thing is the FPI flows are so vast now Surbi uh -huh. that I think even if we account for a say no more than three four percent of FPI inflows uh -huh. uh, Marcellus will become a giant company and, and the bigger story I think is as I was saying we see churches uh -huh. and small universities from Europe and America coming why think, are they coming to India? I think a big part of it is historically they've been invested in China. They've okay. typically had six times more money in China than in India. Mm. And as we're reading in the newspapers every day, China seems to be a country in free fall. Mm. Uh, that, I think that the rapid descent of China is really what's mm. prompting uh, you know, these smaller foreigners to swing towards India so decisively. money is looking for alternate homes, at least you know, partial movement of money. That's right. And that in China to India sort of shift, uh, shift yeah. is real. Yeah. It's, it's actually so three and a half trillion dollars basis, the data we are getting foreigners of three and a half trillion dollars invested in China and a mere 0.6 trillion 
investor in India. So if you assume that, say, half a trillion of foreign mm -hmm. money uh, swings from China to India, and let's assume this is spread over five years, uh -huh. that's roughly $100 billion a year coming that's into the That's what Nifty at 1 lakh. 1 lakh uh, 20, 1 lakh 30. I think <laughs> the market levels are a little scary. I have also have to admit, the market levels are a little scary. Thank you. But uh, thank you so much. That's your thank coffee. You. But, uh, but uh, that apart, I think what's so heartening to see is usually when the foreigners come in, the Indian H&Ws come in afterwards. Mm. This time the Indian H&W came in before yeah. and the foreigner is now following, which bodes well for the Indian H&W's wealth compounding. Speaking of the H&W, the high net worth Indian, uh, let me come down to this. Now, I was speaking to Saurabh a couple of weeks back and he happened to mention this trend that he's picking up. Uh, and I saw that, uh, that, you know, that blog that, that you folks wrote at Marcellus. It's titled very interestingly, it's uh, The Octopus Ascends, right? That's, That's the right. title yes. of the blog. I'm sure you guys can get it on the internet if you want to read more. Uh, but tell us about this whole theory. What is, we know that Indians are getting richer, but what are the numbers that made you really sit up and say that, hey, there could be a money-making opportunity here? So look, part of it was Marcellus's own development. When five years ago, I, I set out uh, to, to build Marcellus. Honestly, my expectation was we will run a few hundred million dollars for say friends and family and a few rich families out yeah. there. The fact that in the space of five years, Marcellus itself scaled to 10,000 clients mm -hmm. and you know, well over in excess, of, well in excess of a billion dollars of assets under management. Mm -hmm. That's when I really awoke to the depth of wealth, the yeah. depth of wealth uh, that we are seeing uh, mm -hmm. pan out, not just in Bombay, Delhi, Bangalore, but even in say places like Indore, mm -hmm. Kolhapur, uh, Shiliguri, Raipur, second tier, third tier towns. Yeah. And as we dug into the subject, the income tax returns were I think the next source of data. Yeah. What the income tax returns are showing is that the number of Indians filing returns of one crore or upwards mm. has doubled in the last five years, whereas the number of Indians filing returns of five lakhs or less is flat over five years. And that's when we realized roughly 200,000 families mm -hmm. have absolutely killed it over the last decade or so. You know, this one stat from that blog, it really blew my mind because that's when you put a number to a trend that you're otherwise observing as an individual. I'll repeat that for the benefit of our viewers and I'm so glad you, you highlighted this. Hear this guys, the number of Indians who have a taxable income of in excess of one crore, that number has doubled from 2019, right? That's 2019 right. to 2023. That's right. So post COVID, something's happened. What's happened? So I reckon three different things have kicked in, so I think first is the stock market itself. Uh -huh. So if you look at the data, this is nifty level data, right? Uh -huh. so the overall stock market is up some 17 or 18 X uh -huh. in 20 years. So uh -huh. more affluent families who loaded up on the stock, stock market 20 years ago or even five years ago, uh -huh. their wealth has skyrocketed on the back of yeah. stock market yeah. compounding. The second is uh, highway building, right? So in the last 12, 13 years, India's national highway network has tripled. Uh -huh. Now, when you triple the highway network, that means any land through which the highway network goes through, the price of that land is basically rising 60 to 100 mm. percent. So if you're a if yeah. you're a, 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 a you're living in a second third tier town and you own some land next to the highway, yeah. your wealth obviously skyrockets on the back of that. Well, I started my you know life in New Delhi, and I've seen what happened to Gurgaon. So I, I'm that well aware of you know that yeah. wealth effect that just highway development and the land around it. What and, that can and do. Now, and assume Gurgaon is now happening all over the nation, right? Oh. Because of the highway, <laughs> right? And the yeah. third piece has been, as India's got joined up, not just highways, say airline connectivity up 5x yeah. in 10 years, yeah. uh, broadband connectivity up 60, 70x, yeah. number of bank accounts have tripled in the last 10 years or so. As you've joined up the country, yeah. uh, entrepreneurs, businesses in small town India yeah. have got linked into the broader economy. So, yeah. so say a, 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 a Rohit Surfactants, Ghadi Detergent, yeah. uh, based out of Kanpur, is I reckon now a multi-billion dollar enterprise because it's not just selling in the region around Kanpur, Ghadi detergent is the number one washing powder in all of northern India, yeah. right? Similarly, say a, a firm like say Danik Bhaskar based mm. out of uh, based out of Indore, mm. it's the largest selling Hindi newspaper in the country. Again, not just selling in Madhya Pradesh, but in the broader Hindi hinterland. So the joining up of India has given businesses in small town India the ability to go pan India with their product. Uh -huh. And that's created an a lot of wealth, wealth, those promoters, those that's families. Right. That's right. Oh, okay. So these three, stock market, road building and the networking of India has created a class of roughly two lakh families. Mm -hmm. they, they, these are the people we call octopuses. Mm -hmm. The two lakh families are basically the people who are now controlling economic, political power and financial muscle across the land. Octopuses, huh? The octopuses, yeah. Okay, wow. So the question is, um, what's the opportunity? 
how does the average aam aadmi myself uh, included in that bracket how does one benefit are you saying there's a way of making money from those who've already made money that's right <laughs> so i think you captured it nicely in the introduction so what we are seeing is across all classes of consumption right the the product which represents h and w consumption let's call it class consumption mm. is outselling the product which represents mass consumption mm. right so take a simple example birkenstock chappals versus relaxo ka chappal <laughs> so as a erstwhile share in a relaxo yes. you know i was only too painfully aware that birkenstock sales are doubling every year mm -hmm. right and um, and if you go to say towns like indore or towns like raipur you can see the birkenstock showroom the stuff is flying off the shelf mm -hmm. and as a erstwhile relaxo shareholder i'm seeing that relaxo's revenue growth or volume growth is is say low double digits uh, at best right so yeah. so similarly say Uh, uh low end motorbikes 1 lakh ka motorbike mm. versus royal enfield right mm. royal enfield 2 to 1 1/2 lakhs outselling mm. the the low end motorbike by a multiple of 3s to 1 15% growth versus 5% growth you know let me just uh, come in here with an interjection now is this just a post covid impact i think you know some people said that this whole revenge buying revenge spending will happen because we bought underwear for too long and that's when stocks like page industries and you know the entire inner wear sector was booming because that's all we did in covid we were staying indoors so one sort of counter theory is that maybe this is revenge buying because the pandemic is over and we are back to living the good life or are you seeing this as a is a bigger structural trend that these expensive bags and these expensive you know chappals and the, the high end luxury hotel stays is this a lasting trend So I think it's a lasting trend. So let's take even underwear, right? Mm -hmm. So as a shareholder in Page, I'm acutely aware of the fact that through the COVID years, yeah. people, as you said, yeah. uh, loungewear and underwear sales yeah. went through the roof, right? So if you see in the COVID unwind, mm -hmm. the undergarment manufacturers who are doing mass scale underwear manufacturing, mm -hmm. right? Rupa, Dollar, Lux, mm -hmm. their profits are down way more than Page's. Page's more expensive stuff. slightly yeah. more premium yeah. product pages yeah. profits around 30% the mass market undergarment manufacturer profits around 60% right well, one second hang on, guys for those who are new to the market who might not know page industries you all know what jockey is right page industries is the company that manufactures all the jockey that you see sold around in indian stores because right. we are trying to make the market cafe very simple for those who are even new to the market so so, so, like so, so nicely put <laughs> so so in a like for like whether it is chappal whether it is undergarments whether it is motorbikes whether it is jewelry mm -hmm. the purveyor of class products mm. expensive products is doing way better than the purveyor of mass products right and now we are roughly 2 years out of covid mm. so even in say the first quarter first quarter fi24 results this trend is visible so i reckon this is a lasting change the fact that in income tax returns those whose income is 5 lakhs or below that number has been flat now for 4 5 years mm -hmm. that suggests that in the sort of the low more modest income strata of indian society mm -hmm. the wealth creation engine isn't firing as much as it is in the 1 okay. crore upwards and and that's the trend we are seeking to play so how can you make money yeah. from that straight forward one would be titan right so so in almost all our portfolios titan gets representation within titan we are seeing that say their riva uh, 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 riva zoya their premium yeah. products are doing really well carrot lane which is online purchases of jewelry that's also doing well Mm. one notch below titan would be royal enfield aisha motors okay. uh, volume growth revenue growth in the mid to high teens mm -hmm. If you wanted to play it through financial services, mm. Kotak has a wealth management and asset management business which is booming on the back of uh, the octopus class booming. So there are several listed plays. Interestingly, if you are able to play this octopus theme in congruence with other mega themes, so another mega theme in India is say the rise of South India, right? If you are able to play octopus alongside the rise of say South India, if you can make them intersect, then even more money to be made. You are saying there's another theme that you've identified. the rise of the south 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 indian south india south india the rise of south india okay i am all ears please expand on this elaborate on this sure um so before i do that just one quick disclaimer all of these stocks uh, i am invested through marcelus's pms okay. so are my parents and so are our 10000 clients mm -hmm. so if you ask me right the last 5 6 years we've seen one big thing which is octopus second one is south india and the third one is the rise of women right so i'll quickly elaborate on all three uh, all uh, the second two themes women in south india a little bit so what's happened is as uh, over the last decade as the indian economy has become even more oriented towards services 
and in the manufacturing sector our manufacturing boom has been seen more sophisticated products such as pharmaceuticals such as light industrial manufacturing south india with its higher uh, greater sort of literacy orientation right more uh, uh, a higher proportion of literate people uh, greater access to seaports uh, greater ability to uh, give law and order provide law and order to factories they have they have surged ahead of the north mm -hmm. so if you look at the per capita income data coming from the government states like telangana per capita income has almost doubled in 5 years right absolute explosion of prosperity really telangana doubling of per, per capita, capita in yeah so per capita income telangana is now 4200 4200 dollars that's almost second world pushing towards second world status um, and you can understand right Tel telangana is say uh, it's hyderabad so google's uh, google's uh, massive offices microsoft a lot of these uh, they're not called back offices anymore global, global, global capability centers so that's right. yeah so yeah. they're booming plus also the pharma industry the specialty chemicals industry in telangana has absolutely taken off right so firms like divi's lab where we are shareholders is based out of that is based out of hyderabad so so uh, karnataka telangana tamil nadu uh, 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 kerala Uh, I would even include Maharashtra in the southern seven, right? So, so if you use Mahara, if you take Maharashtra, Goa, and then go all the way down down to the southern states, per capita income is now fifty, sixty percent higher than the rest of the country. Wow. And the way we are trying to monetize that is finding companies which are over-indexed to South India, right? Okay. So, so I'll give you an obvious example and a slightly less obvious example. So an obvious example would be a company called Rainbow uh, Hospitals. Mm -hmm. This is a maternity and pediat pediatric chain, mm -hmm. which we invested in a few months ago. Seventeen hospitals spread across South India, and the reason you know it caught our eye was uh, for typical child delivery, Rainbow charges two lakhs uh, per for for a, for a birth. Mm -hmm. um, in Ma in Mumbai itself, you'll struggle to get above forty fifty thousand. But in South India, two lakhs per birth in the 17 hospitals that Rainbow has. Typical hospital has 200 to 300 beds. It's not a problem, because women are the are 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 earning more than men in the tech sector. There's industry surveys showing women are earning more than men, and more generally, what we are seeing is at every level of the education system, primary school through to high school, there are more girls studying than boys. And girls' pass rates are significantly higher than boys. That's been the case, I think, for the last many Absolutely. years, right? So, the, so, what, yeah. so, so now that the education system is throwing out all these well-qualified women, mm -hmm. the southern southern Indian economy mm -hmm. is employing them at a rapid rate, mm -hmm. and these women are then going on to get jobs in the tech sector or in the services sector, where industry services are saying women are earning more than men, and therefore paying two lakhs for child delivery in South India is seen as. So the then, when you talk about uh, rainbow, uh, you know, healthcare, that's kind of marrying two of these trends that you identified: South India being really affluent, that's right, and women dominating a lot of the right. decision making. Absolutely, and, you and then you together. can even put the octopus on top of that because many of the <laughs> South Indian families yeah. are also they become octopuses on the back of venture capital and PE funding. Why octopus? I'm just curious. Why did so, you decide so, to right. come up with so this? So octopus basically. <laughs> So as you know, octopus has many tentacles, tentacles and they yeah. suck uh, nutrition through many different sources. Ah, okay. So an octopus <laughs> family makes money in many different ways, right? Uh -huh. They don't just have a day job. Yeah. So if, if in the context of the South Indian example, uh -huh. the both both the partners are earning. Uh -huh. They're earning not just from a salaried job; they're potentially earning from a venture capital funded business as uh -huh. well. Uh -huh. In the context of small town India, an uh -huh. octopus family is earning not just from running, say, a Uh, a construction business yeah. but they'll also be involved in local politics they'll also be doing some road building they'll probably have a truck dealership well, that's or an octopus that's the tentacles of right. the octopus but going back to the south india piece in south india we're seeing economic per capita income growing much faster than the rest of the country on the back of uh, uh, manufacturing pharma uh, the tech sector mm -hmm. and then in parallel we're seeing women mm -hmm. more generally in india women doing much better than men in terms of employment and earnings So women are doing better, and what better time to have this conversation, right? We have the Women's Reservation Bill. Finally, you know, history has been made. So women are doing well. The South is doing well, as per a lot of the data and you know research that you put together. Again, the same question. So how do we play these themes? You gave some examples, like for instance, Titan yeah. on the overall wealth. So effect. let's focus on the women yeah, yeah. piece. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the most straightforward ways to pros profit from women's prosperity is is Nestle, right? It's not just okay. premium infant milk powder. Okay. Uh, they have, and they've in, in fact premiumized it even more after covid mm -hmm. uh, they're also launching a range of products for example launching fruit purees for infants called gerber g e r b e r okay. so this was uh, this has been sold in the west by nestle for for decades mm -hmm. uh, last year they announced they're bringing it to india 
This is expensive stuff. Mm -hmm. But as the Indian woman's income skyrockets, mm -hmm. she wants the best for her child. So okay. it's not just rainbow hospitals at childbirth, mm -hmm. but even after the baby is born, premium foods for the for the but youngster. This is linked to women with children. You know, is there some other way of playing so the affiliate? So back to then Tanishk and Titan for women without children. So if you see Carrot Lane, so this uh -huh. is why Titan is such a clever company. Uh -huh. Tanishk's typical product should be was around 80,000 rupees. Yeah. So what Titan does is Carrot Lane is 20,000 rupees. Right. So Carrot Lane is the right. young professional yeah. woman who's just entered the labor force. And if you see uh, Carrot Lane's growth rates are twice that of Tanishk. Mm -hmm. The carrot lane is growing at revenues mm -hmm. at around 50% and a big part of it is young professional women. Little, little wonder, right, that they ended up buying the, the, whole, the whole company. Thing, yeah. They probably thought along similar lines like, like you are. <laughs> um, and then if you want to then link it to S South India, mm -hmm. if you look at say firms like HDFC Bank and Asian Paints, mm -hmm. if you see what they've done in the last six, seven years, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. HDFC Bank's uh, branch, uh, the rollout of branch, new branches, something like four fifths of their new branches mm -hmm. has been South India centric in the last five, six years. Mm -hmm. Ditto for Kotak Bank, by the way. Four fifths of new branch rollout has been centered on South India. Asian Paints has tripled their dealer count from 50,000 to roughly 150,000 in the last, uh, last five, six years. And the bulk of that dealer count surge is again mm -hmm. South India centric. So smart companies of over-indexing over to the south. So you can either play big companies or over-index to the south. Mm -hmm. Or you come, you, you focus on smaller companies such as a, such as the Rainbow Hospitals, which are focused, uh, where, where their own business is largely southern-centric. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we invested in another firm in Hyderabad last year mm -hmm. called Vijaya Diagnostics. Okay. So they are doing not just PATH, uh, not just blood tests and urine tests, they're also doing radiology, MRIs, CT scans. So high-level diagnostics. Yes, high-level diagnostics yeah. across Telangana, Andhra, mm -hmm. Karnataka, South India focused diagnostics change. And again, this very similar message. Vijaya's return on capital is pushing 40%. Rainbow Hospital's return on capital is pushing 45%. Northern Indian firms can't dream about these metrics. Right? These levels of profitability are very difficult to generate if you are focused on North and East. South is therefore the new Eldorado as far as investing is concerned. Wow, that's very, very interesting. I'll allow you to have a sip of your coffee. I know it's been a breathless run because I've been you know, throwing all these questions at you. Any caveats that you might want to put out here and as I was talking, as I was hearing you talk about connectivity and highways, I was thinking in my head that actually that is something that you've stayed away from, from playing that whole manufacturing slash infrastructure gold rush that seems mm -hmm. to be on. So just some thoughts there because whatever we've discussed today is more about the consumer, about affluence, about essentially these are consumption themes that we're talking about, right? So anything that you'd want yeah, to put so out as a caveat. What, what's worried us a little bit mm -hmm. about this market run up in the last mm -hmm. uh, six months or so is, mm -hmm. there's a kind of real rage out there in, for investing in public sector oh, companies. and how. And, and public sector focused on infrastructure. Yeah. We find that a little, uh, you know, we, we, we sort of struggle to understand the logic behind that because mm -hmm. if you sort of look at the data, right, uh, it's a good thing that the government has gone on a, you know, infrastructure overdrive in the last three years, whether it's defense spending or road building. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the tax collection data, mm -hmm. for April through to July, uh, government's tax receipts were only up 2%, gross tax mm -hmm. receipts were up 2%. Um, and nominal GDP growth, nominal GDP growth for 1Q was I think 7 or 8%, right? Mm -hmm. um, both of which suggest to me a degree of buildup of fiscal pressure. Now, okay. I doubt the government will cut back spending this side of the elections. It'll be crazy for them to do so. Mm -hmm. But regardless of uh, what happens in the general elections next year will be, mm -hmm. I reckon the July 24 budget, mm -hmm. I reckon the July 24 budget will signal a major pullback in government expenditure. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the budget deficit levels are already significantly higher than they were before COVID. Mm -hmm. And as I said, you're seeing a significant slowdown in government tax collections. So maybe this year. that's when this whole party that we've had on that's the PSU right. side on government spending. Absolutely. We we might see some sort of rain Hence in my that. concern on this whole PSU okay. CapEx play. That's one that's one theme we've okay. stayed away from. And the other theme is PSU banks. It's something I've never quite understood. Uh, they're there to serve the nation, not to serve minority shareholders' interests. So we've stayed away from that as well. Okay. Got that. Uh, very quickly, we have just last couple of minutes on the conversation. So I've got some questions out. Uh, this one is from Sam. He's saying, what's better in the current market scenario, growth or value investing? I mean, look, Sam, uh, what works in all market scenarios is buying high quality, clean, well-run companies at significant discounts to their fair value. And at the moment... That's like utopia, right? Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> at the moment where I'm seeing that discount uh -huh. being mm -hmm. the greatest is in 
is in clean, well-run place, mm. whether it's in financial services or in consumption. Mm. Uh, if I look at, say, let me take the simplest way to put this, uh, the, the consistent compounders portfolio, earnings compounding for many, many years has been around 20%, mm -hmm. including the last two years, including the latest quarter. Mm. And yet the share prices of the consistent compounders are up, I think, 6% in the last two years. Uh, I don't think free gifts in life come, come, in, uh, come wrapped in any more nicer packaging than this. Mm. Some of India's greatest compounders, earnings are running away at, mm. at a rapid rate. Share prices aren't running away because the public is out there going into Local. PSU stocks, you know, the, the high. Right. So, life is giving decibel. you a Ram Laddu wrapped in a you know golden <laughs> ribbon. Uh, my job is to take the Ram Laddu with both hands. <laughs> Even though people might be eating Moti Chur or something else them, at that yeah. same time. I, I, I love Ram Laddu. <laughs> okay, sure enough. Uh, Adi has an interesting question. Adi Gautam, he's saying PMS or mutual fund? You're the best person to ask this because, you're, <laughs> by the way, sort of writes a lot of books. He's been writing through the last, I think, 10 years. Uh, and. Uh, you cover all aspects of it and I think this is a question that people who are in that mid-affluent part of India, they're really grappling with it. If you have 50 lakh rupees, put it in mutual funds or give it to a PMS fellow. Yeah. So look, uh, the way I've always seen it is the wrapper is somewhat secondary. There are 350 active PMSs in the country. There are several thousand equity MFs uh, run on an active basis. Hmm. Uh, only a small minority of PMSs, only a small minority of actively run MFs yeah. will allow you to compound wealth at a great rate. Yeah. The wrapper is somewhat irrelevant. What you are looking for, Adi, and what I think all of us are looking for is high quality fund managers who, who, make, uh, uh, who, who take concentrated positions in well-run companies and yeah. stick with them. There are some great equity MFs out there. Uh, and there are some great PMSs out there uh, and there are plenty of dud MFs and dud PMSs out there. <laughs> so I don't think uh, you and I should get too lost in saying this is Sahi or that is Sahi. Choose the right fund yeah. manager. Choose the right fund manager regardless of whether it is PMS or, uh, or mutual fund. If you yeah. can't do it, then get a good investment advisor. There are more than 1,000 registered investment advisors whose details are on the SEBI website. Yeah. Get one of them to choose a great fund manager for you. Okay, well answered. I think that really kind of explains it very clearly for people who are grappling with this dilemma. Finally, uh, just some you know some viewers are asking mm -hmm. you about some of the holdings that you have in terms of the thought process and how you're looking at those companies now. Uh, this is from Naveen Kumar. He's saying, can you you know get, give you a, can you give a quick comment on Garware Tech Fibers and JMM Fordler? That's been a long holding, right? Mm -hmm. you, you've liked this stock in this company. Uh, Deepak wants to know a little more about RHI, Magnesita. So pick one okay. or two. So let me that. let me do yeah. uh, uh, RHI. We sp I've spoken in public about GMM and uh, uh, and Garvari a little bit, but mm -hmm. let me talk about RHI. Mm -hmm. So this is similar to GMM Fordler. So GMM Fordler makes uh, these sorts of you know ceramic lined uh, vessels, the giant versions of this coffee mug for the pharma industry. Mm -hmm. uh, GMM has I think 55% global share, 75% India share. Mm -hmm. Very similar to that is RHI Magnesita. Mm -hmm. So when you run a steel plant or a glass glass uh, plant, you, you have a furnace. The furnace is operating at roughly 1500 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. Right now the walls of the furnace will melt. The pro whole product pro manufacturing process will go for a toss unless you line the walls of the furnace with refractory material with yeah. bricks made of special material, hence the name Magnesita. Magnesium is part of the bricks. Yeah. RHI Magnesita is the world leader, 40% global share, roughly 40% India share as well. Yeah. So most of India's large steel plants yeah. will be using RHI. RHI employees will be inside the steel plant. Every few days, the, the, those bricks will be changed and RSI, uh, RHI's uh, employees will be doing the same. The lock-in therefore is intense. Yeah. Typically, when a steel plant chooses a, a refractory material supplier, they don't change that for years. Mm -hmm. As a result, because of the lock-in, RHI Magnesita is able to earn high returns on capital, 30-35%. Mm -hmm. Over the last couple of years, they've consolidated all their businesses in one listed entity, RSI, RHI Magnesita India. Then that listed entity has taken its surplus cash and gone out and acquired smaller players, such as, say, the Dalmia, Dalmia refractory business that RHI acquired. Uh, I reckon as this whole China plus one play kicks in, our country will need more steel, right? But steel itself is not, not a product that we invest in. Steel is a commodity. You cannot make money in the long run by investing in a commodity. But what you can make money is the ancillary supply, ancillary supplying into the steel industry. So steel volume growth, I reckon, for several years to come will be roughly around GDP growth, 6 to 8%. 
RHI is the most critical ancillary supplier to the steel industry mm -hmm. uh, because it's a uh, it's a it's got bargaining power. It gets high returns on capital, okay. which they reinvest to grow their business at a good clip. And I'm hoping okay. that my my clients and myself we can compound with RHI at roughly 20 25 percent for the years to come. Very very interesting. Now I'm going to keep that in mind as well. Now that you've explained it so uh, you know beautifully, uh, clearly laid it out there. Uh, Saurabh, now I'm actually running out of time. I also have to run. I know you have uh, meetings to keep. Otherwise, this conversation could have just gone on and no, on. Thank you, Sarvi. Thank you for that. But I hope it's the first of many to come. And I hope we can get you to the cafe more often. Looking forward to more cups of coffee at the cafe. Lovely speaking with you. Have a you. fantastic day ahead. And thank you so much thank for coming so much, in today. Sarvi. Thank you. Thanks.